Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Project Octane. Today we're going to be talking about the drivetrain for the vehicle. So if we look at the model that we kind of developed at the end of last week with both the chassis and the suspension on there, uh, one of the things that we know is that the driver is going to be filling up most of the front half of the vehicle. So we're not going to fit an engine up there, we're not going to run any drive shafts to make this four-wheel drive or anything. The engine's going to sit back here in the back and just power the, the rear wheels. The other thing that we really know is that we're going to need a differential uh, to split power to the rear wheels. It also allows it to rotate at different speeds. That way when you're cornering, you don't have any binding or anything like that. Uh, and what better way of figuring out what kind of differential we need than just pulling one off of the same vehicle that we pulled the suspension from. So that's what we did. We went back to the scrapyard and found the same make and model expedition and decided to pull this differential. The next step being to take it and disassemble it. Uh, there's certain critical dimensions that we have to know in terms of aligning everything. So as part of the reverse engineering process, I measured a whole bunch of things while it was assembled and then went through the process of disassembling everything to then reverse engineer individual components and reassemble it into the model. This thing was definitely way too much fun to play with. Um, I spent a lot of time for disassembling it, uh, spinning everything and just having a good time. But now that we have everything in pieces, like I said, we can actually measure them up individually, model them, and then put it back together in CAD. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump to that. And there we go. Nothing about it needs to be crazy accurate, just something that can represent what we need it to, give us the right mounts uh, that we need, and everything else just kind of look close enough. So here's where things sort of change up a little bit. Normally in a vehicle, uh, power comes in via drive shaft and the pinion gear, turns the ring gear in the carrier, and that's what diverts your power out to the wheels. You can see in this video uh, that concept as well as the concept of the wheels turning at different speeds based on how those spider gears in the middle uh, interact. In our case though, because we're using a motorcycle engine, we don't have a need to divert power that 90 degrees from the inlet to the outlets. If I pull our model back up here, I went ahead and found this model of the CBR600 bike engine online, just as a reference. What we're really looking at is this guy here. This outlet shaft from the bike's transmission with the engine and transmission integrated into the same block or housing here. That power, when you put a sprocket on here, is already in the direction that we need it. There's no sense going to a 90 degree shaft from here back 90 degrees to the axles. We can just run something straight. Um, so instead of using the ring and pinion gear, what we can actually do is remove the ring gear and where that's mounted, install a sprocket. We then leave the cover that's normally over the differential assembly installed on this front face, which is normally just a cover with power coming in from the opposite side. We now face this towards the engine and run a chain back around that sprocket. This allows us to still mount everything, but have a simpler uh, means of delivering power. So when I put that in the model, here's what we're looking at. Well, I don't have a sprocket on either the differential uh, carrier or on the engine outlet here. You can see, you imagine <laughs> the sprockets and the chain in place. Uh, that's all we really need, so long as this is mounted to the chassis. We still have a problem though, and that is that all of this using all of the stock suspension drivetrain in the rear here assumes then that the distance between the wheels is going to be the same as what's on an Expedition. And unfortunately that's not the case. Our uh, track width is actually five and a half inches shorter in the rear of the Octane. We aren't making this thing nearly as big as a very large SUV. Um, so we have to lose five and a half inches somewhere. Doing that though means we actually have to modify two parts. The first being the axle and second being the housing. So with this axle, we have plenty of space to be able to remove uh, the five and a half inches that we need. So we can go ahead and sort of turn this down, cut it, splice it, weld it back together and be okay. With the housing, on the other hand, uh, this being all one cast piece, by the time you splice this thing and try and machine it and then uh, 
sleeve it, weld it, and get everything back. Um, it's a lot more effort than what's kind of really worth. So rather than modifying this piece, uh, we have this guy. Um, just some stock uh, aluminum tubing that we're going to use to uh, make a whole new uh, housing extension out of. And you can see that here now. Just a slightly different extension with our shortened axle. Everything else has stayed the same, the carrier, the main part of the housing, the other axle, everything else, same old same. Just two modified parts, and we can throw that back into the main assembly. And it ends up fitting a whole heck of a lot better. Especially if I show the chassis. It now no longer sticks out uh, either side of the vehicle, and it's the perfect length for our CV axles to be able to connect the wheels. If we unhide those, we get this. Now it's kind of crudely modeled in here. Um, it's just so that I can actually keep all of the uh, constraints. If I actually grab this corner here, it does nothing. Hang on. Now if I grab this corner here, I can actually articulate the suspension and not have to worry about anything being bound up. That CV axle isn't going to actually be a problem and it'll look normal when actually installed but for modeling purposes it's just a little fun that's all i really have for today uh, we're making progress uh, there's still some custom parts and stuff that we had to get made before it can all go together um, and we're still working on the ad actual tubing order uh, that we wrapped up for that chassis yesterday obviously none of this can be assembled until this guy is up and ready and so that's going to be a big uh, focus moving forward um, but might not see it for a couple of videos since that's something that's still ongoing. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.